Wouldn't it be great to tap the tempo of your echo or of your delay audio effect in Ableton Live, tapping this via your mouse or via a MIDI controller? Possible now via a few Max for Life devices of mine. Hi, I'm Toby from AbletonDrummer.com. I created the, those Max for Life devices, which are letting you quickly tap in a tempo, tap in the tempo of your echo or delay. So let's have a quick look how you're gonna set this up. So let's look on the echo here first. So obviously we need to set this to time and then we have the set echo time via tap device. We need to map this Max for Life device to the time we want to control. So I just click map and then selected the um, time selection here for the echo device. And now I'm able to tap the tempo. I'm doing this via my mouse and you can see if I'm tapping here, for example, 835 milliseconds, it's translating that to the device I just selected here. So let's do the same with the delay effect here. So if we set the delay to time, obviously, so it's not relative to the master tempo, but independent. I go to map on the set delay time via tab, and then I select the time wheel or dial here, and now I can tap in the values here, and if I tapping those, you can see it's changing accordingly to the time I have between my two tapping here. So this way, you can quickly set this up to different devices here. So for showing purposes, I left them on one track here. Obviously, the echo or the delay effect can sit anywhere in your Ableton Live set and you can map it to the track it's sitting on there. So I have a few things here I want to show you. So obviously you can do this via a MIDI controller. So let's quickly set this up. If we go into the MIDI map menu, we select the tab button we want to map and then you hit your controller. So now it's already doing this via my button here and you can see it's changing accordingly to what time I'm tapping in here. So there are a few things when you map stuff in uh, Max for Live devices here or even in Ableton Live. So now we have, uh, we're sending a MIDI note in here and um, made a MIDI mapping to our tap button here. And if um, this button down here would be set to toggle, it's staying on, so you would need to press twice. So this makes sense if you're using um, a MIDI controller, which is sending MIDI CC, because the on and the off would be triggered um, on the same time. So then you want to set this to toggle. If you set this uh, via a MIDI note, Ableton Live is only listening to the MIDI note on your sending. So the off is being done automatically here. And obviously you don't want to tap this twice. You just want to tap this once. Okay, so one more um, issue here. If you are using that via a MIDI controller or even via your mouse, um, obviously this is an action and this action is being put into the edit history of Ableton Live. So you have the problem, depending on if, if you're producing, you don't want this to be in your um, undo history. So if I now go to edit, for example, I have the tab here as an entry as an entry in my undo history. And for this, you have a much better option here because those devices need to need to sit on a MIDI track for this purpose. So I could select actually my nano pad too. So this is my controller to go directly into this track. So MIDI is now being received in this track and can be set up to those two devices. Let us quickly delete the MIDI mapping we made here. So for now, I could go in and say, actually, I want this to be triggered via a note. And you can see now already that MIDI notes are being received here inside this track. I selected my MIDI input. I set the monitor to in and the indicators are flashing here now. So I know I'm sending in some MIDI messages in here. This will only work for MIDI notes. I have to turn on the MIDI note function here and it's showing you uh, a pitch number here and you need to send in and set this up to the right pitch number you're sending in here. You can do this automatic. Just hit S and now it's detecting the MIDI note pitch you're sending in here um, automatically. And now I'm able to 
um, trigger that tap button. It won't blink, but you can see it's changing the values here and here. You can see that now. So it now wouldn't go into your undo history and you will keep your undo history clean. Plus, you can have this uh, set up as a um, preset already. Obviously, you need to do the mapping here because the mapping is already and is always like um, uh, dependent on the Ableton Live set you're using that one in here. So just quickly to show you if that, for example, would sit on your master track. Let's fold the time tracker down here now. Um, so I now want to make this mapping here for the tab echo one going to this device here and map this to this device here. So what I need to do is, um, so for example, if you have a fresh device, you click map, you go to the track where the device is sitting on, you select the parameter you want to map and now it's being set up. So if I hit my button here now, you can see values are changing here. And if I go to the echo device, you can see here the values are changing accordingly to the tap tempo I put in here. So those devices are available. Um, just follow the link in the video description here. And those are Max for Life devices. That means you will need Max for Life to make use of those. Max for Life is included in Ableton Live Suite or can be bought as an add-on towards Ableton Live Standard. I tested those devices on Ableton 10, 11, and 12. So um, they are working all across the, the different versions people are using right now. And I'm pretty sure uh, for future updates. So I'm pretty sure it will work on Ableton 13, which will hopefully come in a few years. Cool. Okay, take care. Uh, check out my Max for Life devices. As I said, links in the video description.